Okay, let's give this a shot. Felt like having work outside today, and uh, this is literally my very first time plugging in and using this clip mic digital 2 i genuinely don't know what it's going to sound like i plugged it into the phone i adjusted my levels in the camera app and now you're going to have to tell me what you think of the sound quality so drop those comments down below i'm trying to keep this setup as simple as possible it's just microphone into the phone's usb-c port i haven't done any editing or processing or sweetening to this audio these are all the files directly out of the camera. I have a really long history with this style of product. I, I used the original Clip Mic Digital for years. It was one of my main travel audio solutions when I was producing for Pocket Now. I had that mic, I'd plug it into some old beat up iPhone, usually a, a pink iPhone 5C, uh, which I, I, I got for not a lot of money and was able to kind of bump up the storage so it was a pretty cheap way to have a portable audio recording solution instead of walking around with like a handy recorder and a bunch of other um you know external microphones or cables or battery packs i ran that clip mic for years literally until the lightning connector completely failed on it now that original clip mic wasn't an apogee branded product it was originally a sennheiser product but Apogee was responsible for the digital interface that's built into the cable. This new clip mic, the clip mic digital two is properly coming from Apogee. It no longer seems to be a Sennheiser partnership. We've got a slightly different mic element, but Apogee is responsible for all the digital goodness in getting this signal into some type of recording device, some kind of host computer. I'm kind of doing this a little quick and dirty. I don't think most people would really cable up a lav like I'm wearing it right now on this t-shirt. Um, and I'm also cheating a little bit. The, the Clip Mic Digital 2 comes with, it comes really well accessorized. There is a little alligator clip so you can clip it to a shirt. I'm cheating because I pulled a magnetic clasp from one of my other lavaliers so I could just kind of snap it on here. I really should try and set this up with the included accessories, but it's so hot. I just really can't stomach the idea of, of wearing a button up shirt right now. And I'm pretty sure as we're talking, as I'm saying this to you, my deodorant is actively failing because it's summer and it's hot. Apogee is rolling their own solution here, but the mission remains the same. A high quality microphone capsule, high quality digital interface in as streamlined a fashion as we can get. Apogee is not known for making cheap prosumer gear so even a solution like this is is a little on the pricier side of this equation but we're trying to cross that line between consumer and professional and offering up tools that really do take your audio mission to a higher tier uh yeah we got a garbage truck backing up right now this is kind of a, a great moment to showcase what it is that i love about labs these these clip-on lavalier microphones where the whole point is is proximity i'm trying to get this mic as close to me as possible, but I still wanna hear a sense of the environment that I'm currently recording in. So you should still be able to hear some of the noise around me. This is an omni-pattern microphone, but because it's literally on me, I should be the main focus of, of the audio recording. I should be rising above the noise. This is a huge difference between wearing a microphone and then having some kind of camera perspective microphone where if I were recording off of the microphones built into this phone, you'd probably be hearing this really loud garbage truck in a more distracting fashion. The original Clip Mic Digital, the first version of this, was an iOS only device. It was all one cable, everything was built into it, and it ended with a lightning connector. No way to adapt that for other products. I had to use it with an iPhone or, or an iPad. Probably the biggest improvement to this setup for the Clip Mic Digital 2 is turning the ADC into a cable port that you can attach any end connector that you want. You can use this with a PC, with USB-A, you can use it with an Android phone with USB-C, you can plug this into an iPad, and they also include a lightning connector for those of you who are on iPhones that don't have any other choice but to use terrible lightning connector accessories. But snarkiness aside, the exciting point to that Accessories manufacturers are realizing that the iPhone cannot be its own entrenched market anymore. There's literally only one product that benefits from having lightning connector accessories, and so many of our gadgets can really benefit from these broad USB-powered 
devices and gadgets. Yeah, now the wind's picked up, it's getting a little bit breezier and right off to the side, I can hear some landscapers. So there's some weed whackers going off around me. It's actually pretty loud, but I'm trying not to yell through this noise. I'm gonna be really curious to see what this sounds like when I get it back to the Gadget Lab. It's still a major part of the conversation that I'm, I'm trying to highlight when I talk about products like this is, it's not one mic is better or one mic is worse. What is the value of spending this much money on a single audio peripheral? It's really trying to drill in the point we wanna look at the right tool for the right job, the right audio kit for the right audio conditions. You know, this sort of new crop of wireless mics, you know, you've seen the Rode Wireless Go 2 in a lot of my videos, but there are still situations where we'd want a cabled connection to maintain the highest quality signal stability and to prevent any potential interference. On wireless mics, we've got to jump through some hoops to do things like local storage backups in the mic capsules, which can then be kind of difficult to get off of those microphones if we're shooting, editing, and producing out in the field. I'm trying to highlight this on an older Android phone that can still shoot 4K 60 frame per second video. You really can get it all done and not worry about your audio signal, your audio stability. Now, of course, of course, I still do have a couple concerns with this product. From moving from the Clipmic Digital 1 to the Clipmic Digital 2, I think Apogee has done a really good job um, giving us a little extra cable length. Uh, out of the box, when we're using the cables that are supplied with this mic, you can run it through clothing and you've got a little bit more room if you want to do what I'm doing, like a walk and talk vlog. I've got my phone just on a simple tripod stand and I'm using that as a handle. You've got plenty of slack for that. This is going to get a bit more difficult to use though, if you're trying to set up maybe more of a torso to head shot at a slightly further distance on a tripod and you still wanna run the mic through clothing. One of the major advantages of this over the previous generation though, because we're using USB-C, it's probably gonna be easier to get a good adapter cable, you know, something that you can lengthen that USB-C connection and give yourself a little extra slack. I've always found stuff like that more difficult when we're using lightning connectors, but an adapter for length doesn't come in the box. So that's the solution you'll need to find on your own. This is gonna jack up my exposure, but it's so hot. I've got to do one of these in the shade. Also, the phone is getting pretty toasty, but I've been, I've been pleasantly surprised how it's hanging with me with uh, multiple clip after clip after clip. The other concern that I've got with the clip mic digital is one that I've, I've reiterated with other audio recording manufacturers. The connector for the ADC on this clip mic is a USB micro. There's a micro USB connector. I'd really prefer audio manufacturers refine some of these products and get them up to USB-C. Um, it, it's still not a terrible challenge to find a USB-C to micro USB adapter cable. I mean, I think you can still get those kinds of things on Monoprice, but just the ubiquitousness of USB-C, especially on our, our mobile gadgets, I would definitely prefer that connector be USB-C. It's gonna be way easier in the future to find USB-C to USB-C cables as opposed to USB-C to micro USB. There's just something about audio manufacturers. They don't want to give up on micro USB. It drives me crazy, but it is kind of hilarious. Those concerns out of the way, this is probably where we can start wrapping this up, come to some kind of conclusion. I'm saving a part of the conclusion for our conversation down in the comments, what you think about the audio quality. I wanna see what y'all think after taking a listen down below. The, the, the value proposition on good audio gear and good recording gear is always difficult to quantify if you're kind of coming out of the lowest common denominator budget tier of recording solutions. There are plug-in lavalier mics that you can, you can buy for like 10 bucks on Amazon. But what I'm looking at with something like this is that individual who's trying to step up into something a bit more consistent, uh, less distracting elements or noise or distortion in their recordings. And we're also looking at a, a beautifully streamlined way to get there. Even for how simple a lot of this wireless gear has become, there can be a, a little bit of a, st a, a setup hurdle to getting that working, to understanding how it all works, getting up to speed with it, and making sure you're always getting those consistent results. I've had a lot of friends kind of burn out a few of their projects because they, they didn't really have a good feel for how their wireless audio kit was gonna function. So what Apogee has done here 
is taken some of my favorite aspects of that simple cabled uh, equipment, has spruced up the quality of it, and then has also made it a lot more flexible than the previous generation of this hardware, where I could take this to an iPhone, to an iPad, to any number of Android devices, or I could conceivably use this as, as, a, as a way to plug into a PC. You've got something that is surprisingly flexible and can move to a number of different environments, and it's always going to be on body audio recording. So you're always going to be the focus of that recording. There are some times where uh, like a boom mic is gonna sound really good. There are other, other situations where it's just gonna be too far away from you to get the audio results that you want. So when we try to quantify that, when we try to say this is worth a certain amount of money, it really comes down to your audio needs. You wanna get the right audio tools for the right audio situations. But if this is the tool that gets your job done, I don't think we should be too concerned about a a more premium price tag. And that's gonna do it for my little field trip here today. Thank you for taking this walk with me. I needed to get some fresh air, get a little sunshine, a couple minutes outside of the gadget lab, but to still get some of my work done. Um, I'll, I'll be down in the comments. Let, let me know what you think. Let's have some conversations about audio quality and, and how successful or unsuccessful this experiment was. I'll of course leave some links down in the description below for more information on the Apogee Clip Mic Digital 2. And of course, all of the rest of Apogee's gear where I've been really happy to be working with them on some recording solutions lately. Some very interesting products for us to discuss if you care about your ears. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing, subscribing, uh, you know, supporting your favorite content creators, super critical. So those of you in the, in the comments and checking out the description, hitting those links, maybe buying some merch, greatly appreciated. Of course, all of my affiliates and partnerships on somegadgetguy.com, or you can join the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. These are basically the coolest tech pals on the internet. So I hope you'll check them out. You know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at somegadgetguy on the Twitters and the Twitch. Not so much on the Facebooks or the Instagrams, but I will catch you all on the next video.